Hello and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with I, your host, Agassino Zynga, and this is episode number 534. That's 534 of the Agassino Zynga show coming at you live and direct from an undisclosed location somewhere in the depths of East London. If it's your first time checking the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. If you're listening via the podcasting apps, Apple, the Spotify's and all that malarkey, leave me a five-star review. I've just seen recently Spotify has introduced a rating system on their podcast. So if you can leave me a review on there, I'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. So leave a review at Spotify where you see this podcast, where you listen to this podcast. Leave a review. Let people know that you're enjoying the show. So when they get on the show page, it can be like, oh, wow, this guy does some good shit. And they can back it because, you know, people are in it group thinking all that malarkey and of course support via patrons also more than welcome that patreon.com which is agostino for more content on their bonus episodes bits of extra bits of content x-rated stuff whatever it may be join the patreon at patreon.com for just agostino it's only one pound it's only one dollar if you didn't buy anyone a gift especially your mum especially your family members then the least you can do is gift yourself a subscription via the agostino zinger show patreon which you can find a link in the description of this show wherever you're listening to it you'll find a support this channel on patreon link click that description and get involved in it get bloody involved but yeah apart from that hope this is hope this podcast is meeting you well hope you are good wherever this may be finding you i'm doing fairly okay it's now the new year um things are going swimmingly on my side of things just getting started just kind of figuring out I'm not figuring out, I'm trying to put it into writing actually what I want to do in terms of resolutions, in terms of just goals that I want to set. Um, I've never really been the biggest resolution guy, but I think they're incredibly important in terms of giving you a kind of an overview of where you want to go, a direction or kind of providing with the overarching theme with how you want to kind of progress with the next couple of months. I think there's enough time. The thing about resolutions, I think in general, is that they kind of meant to set you in the right direction. They're not necessarily meant to be the way you should live your life 100%, but they should be a guiding principle. They should kind of give you some way to kind of figure out how you want to live your life in it. That's kind of how I treat it. I don't treat him as like, oh yeah, this is the only way I'm going to do things. Bruv, why is this thing still saying my encoding is going crazy? Hold on, let me just double check this again. Please bear with me. <clears throat> For whatever reason, it seems like whenever I do this podcast and I record it, there's always some little technical difficulty that kind of just, for whatever reason, catches me you know, off kilter. It's not really catching me off kilter because I could just sort this out beforehand, but you know, you got to live life on the edge sometimes and this is what I'm doing, living on the edge. Let's see if that's helping anything. Let's see if that's going to help. It just increases the CPU usage actually. Is it increasing CPU usage? Okay, there, now it's gone. Okay, maybe that's good. Anyway, so what I was going to say, oh my God, it's still coming back again uh mate what's going on with this today anyway so if i if i did this right it's gonna come straight back up again isn't it i don't know but anyway let's continue so um i think overall resolutions are meant to be there to give you a good example to kind of set a good sort of um to kind of give you a good start in the beginning of the year so that you're not just kind of slowly but surely traversing and stumbling your way through life you're meant to have some sort of guiding principle and i think there's enough time throughout the rest of the year for you to enjoy yourself and indulge in any kind of hedonism or any kind of debauchery that you want to do so why not kind of frame the first couple of months or the first few months of the year as some sort of um way to you to rewrite the wrongs of your last year right or to maybe um break the shackles of some sort of addiction or for yeah or maybe basically to kind of get rid of these kind of lifestyle choices that you feel are somewhat destructive whatever it may be i don't think that's actually a bad thing um i think for the most part over the last few years new year's resolutions have gotten a bit of a bad rap mostly i think because of the fault of like motivational speakers and stuff right those guys and girls who kind of give all this rah-rah bullshit about you can achieve what you want to achieve you believe vision boards and all sort of nonsense from like oprah and books like the secret but overall the premise of it like i said is pretty solid why wouldn't you want to start the year trying to be a better version of yourself why wouldn't you start the year trying to you know again um make right on some things that you might have done wrong in the past why wouldn't you in a new year want to learn a new skill right or maybe have a goal in mind in terms of your career or maybe have a goal in mind in terms of your personal relationships or your romantic relationships or your family why wouldn't you want that it makes complete sense in it so i get it i honestly really do get it and um i'm just hoping now especially with covid 
and everyone having loads of time to just kind of sit around and not do much outside of working outside looking after their family and outside of paying bills then maybe this is the perfect time for you to start doing something too to make that change you need in order to get your life where you wanted to get to and i know that's why i usually use it for and this is pre-covid pre-covid i always used um new year's as a time to kind of you know um, make my life as close to what i would want it to be ideally and then to use that as a barometer because usually i found the months of january i could go super hard especially even sometime in february right because there's no real distractions maybe apart from a valentine's day here and there if you want to celebrate with somebody or whatever but it's, you're not really doing much in those months so i'd always use those times as a time to kind of start again similar to why i'm so in love with days like mondays even though i'm a bit of a psycho for that and no one else agrees with me i think mondays are a good time to reset and to kind of get kind of stuff in line and kind of go back to a drawing board especially for someone like myself who does indulge in going out a lot and partying and maybe getting on it too much mondays are always a great time for me to kind of start again and if anything kind of quote unquote own my weekend earn the opportunity to kind of go a bit crazy on the weekend by having a real good tight week monday to friday monday to saturday wherever you want to kind of frame a week and then go from there but like i said i think the motivational speakers over the years have kind of sullied the name of these resolutions but i'm definitely a fandom i'm going to actually um write no i'm actually going to publish no, not publish a video. Shall I publish a video? Maybe I'll do it separately. It depends what I do. If I'll just talk about in a podcast my goals and what I'm trying to do, the ones I can share, of course, or I'll make a separate video that I'll quickly edit and put it together and kind of frame some of the things I'm trying to achieve in the new year around the current overarching theme. And then hopefully by the month of what, March or whatever, I'll have, have a really good um, conclusion to it because I'm going to be doing the 75 challenge, which obviously you guys should have known by now. No surprise. I've been talking about it for a while. And not because there's anything special but more so because it's one of the only programs or kind of philosophies or way of life i've seen for the new year that kind of pushes you to the to your edge it kind of requires you to read a book right to read a you know, 10 pages from a book to go out and do some sort of form of exercise once twice per day actually because you basically have to do 45 minutes in the morning for minutes or well, two four five minute slots um, you have to eat healthy for the majority for the entire time there's no cheat meals all these things are things that i kind of want to do but i never get around to doing them because of all these other excuses so this is a great time to do it especially with the clubbing scene that i know and love being completely sullied or somewhat the need for me to go out and that isn't necessarily there as it was prior so i'm just going to take this opportunity to do the things i need to do so i'll have a little video a little clip of that maybe on the next show once i get everything written down because i like to write things down especially in the goals in terms of getting an idea of what i want to do going next i don't like to just have these vaguenesses around i want to have a clear outlined goal about what i want to do and hopefully that's what i'll do in the next couple of days and you obviously hear that first on this podcast um apart from that what's i talk about oh yeah new year's eve or new year's because i think i spoke about christmas already christmas is a bit of a horror show but you know talk about that another time maybe i'll put that up on the patreon um new year's eve was very quiet for me in terms of what i'm used to but also really enjoyable went out for some dinner went to Hawksmoor. that was absolutely lovely it's one of our premier sort of steakhouses we have here in england or most so london um i think the first restaurant if i'm not mistaken is the one that we went to which was um spitfields which is in shoreditch really nice um kind of the place you'd go to if you're working for a company and they want to take you for christmas dinner or something or a client meeting it was always something that I kind of treated as a bit it was definitely a treat for me right back in the day especially when i was earning like you know pittance there was no kind of possibility of me being able to pay anything in order to kind of be able to afford a meal over there but obviously this year with the success of of this podcast and the success of this channel and the fact that i've taken it more seriously over the last couple of months and obviously me working again and all this sort of stuff has actually allowed me to have a little bit more i would say what do you say disposable income in order to kind of indulge in those things so um that was one of those things i was very look very much looking forward to in order to kind of splurge a bit of cash go a bit crazy eat as much as i want drink as much as i want and not really have any regrets and i've really done the only thing i have a regret about is that it's kind of puffed up my face as you can see via the camera all right i've indulged a little bit too much i've kind of uh got on the old uh, brendan Shaw diet when it comes to the eating sort of stuff but now it's the new year i'm going to be a bit more strict going forward but that was really fun i'm not going to lie had a steak fillet uh, yeah fillet steak actually yeah pretty sure i fillet steak um medium well lovely uh i had the peppercorn sauce that they served there which was brilliant 
obviously had the macaroni and cheese which they served there which was great um they got a really good salad there also that was really 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 nice really fresh um didn't do any desserts did loads of wine did loads of beer didn't have a cocktail actually regretted not having one of those because their cocktail menu was there's pretty decent too and you know it was a pretty hefty bill but still i was happy that i was able to afford it so again um thank you for everyone that's tuned into the show thank you everyone that's kind of offered any sort of motivation offered any sort of inspiring quotes or said oh that i've done this i've done that whatever definitely all those things have definitely helped to keep me going and if anything they've afforded me the luxury and a possibility many many years after the fact to be able to go back to those kind of places and be able to splurge a bit you know what i mean because i hadn't had that possibility before that wasn't on my cards so i mean i couldn't splurge i couldn't be crazy i had to kind of pick and choose my battles when it came to eating out most of the time was spent you know having tuna mayo sandwiches at home and shit you know you know the vibes or egg and cheese sandwiches whatever or melted cheese sandwiches right or chopped cheese however they called it in the u.s why they call it chopped cheese sandwiches when the egg when the cheese is not chopped I wonder if you're American, and you know that. Please let me know, because a chopped cheese sandwich is just what we call a, a, a cheese melt, really, right? You just put in a bit of cheese and bread, and then you just put in it in a in a George Foreman or you know on whatever tabletop you got, right? Um, but you're on I me mean, hot surf, whatever that thing is, what they use in um, bodegas in America. But you're not exactly chopping the cheese. I never understand why it's called a chopped cheese. Maybe because they do chop the cheese. I don't know. I don't think they do, but let me know in the comments. But yeah, so I'm thankful about that. So yeah, the first things first for the new year. I want to start by saying how thankful I am. Thankful for everything that's happened in the last, what, eight months or so. Because prior to that, I think I mentioned on the show a few times, I think some of you guys who've had a bit more of an eagle eye, some of you guys and girls will be able to notice if you see some of the videos of myself, especially on this podcast, especially videos more so, because I think my voice, I can hide things a lot more. But if you see what I actually look like at the, at the beginning of January to now, it's a huge difference of course my face is still as puffy right because i haven't been as strict as i wanted to be but in terms of my hair my skin my facial hair like i just look completely different i was really going through it the beginning of the year when obviously i was unemployed um you know struggling to find positions to go and you know work in and stuff and coming to the real end and the last end 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 pennies and pounds of my savings i you know thankfully had something saved up that could allow me to not have to kind of borrow money from friends and family and shit that was really really important for me um i did try unsuccessfully to get some sort of credit card loans and whatnot but they didn't accept me which i'm kind of thankful that didn't happen right so i could just yeah because if i if i did actually get accepted some of those credit card loans and stuff i don't know what i would have done i really don't know i probably would have been in a far worse situation than i'm in now at the moment so i'm thankful that didn't happen and then yeah i just kind of trusted and believed that hopefully over the time i would be able to kind of get over this hump and slowly but surely it's kind of worked do you know what i mean it really has kind of worked out um it doesn't always work out like this, but it did kind of work out for me where, you know, I was able to get a job. I was able to kind of build this podcast and this channel up a little bit more over the last few months. Again, it's not crazy. I'm not Joe Rogan out here, but still it allowed me to have some level of income coming in a second stream, which kind of, if anything, replaced um, some of the stream I was getting from djing which was helping out a lot which i didn't really notice at the time when i did when i was employed because again i had two streams of income i took it from granted really um when i was djing quite often but then when the djing dried up because of the lockdown and maybe because people thought i was shit i don't know who knows what the answer is but um when that kind of stuff ended i kind of had to re figure out i had to kind of figure out where my next kind of where that other stream was coming from because that was really important for me because it allowed me to do stuff like this it allowed me to buy mics and cameras and book space and hours and kind of the studios where I can go and play it allowed me to do these things that I can't do just solely on my employment stuff you know what I mean because I've got other situations other circumstances I've got to kind of look after so having that extra bit of income allowed me to kind of use that money to kind of you know get a bit crazy and do certain things about that like hopefully there'll be a GoPro coming soon as well that I'm going to be ordering I know I've talked about that a while but that's coming so all those things were only happened or only possible because I had this other stream of income coming in so I'm really thankful for that. I'm not going to lie. Like that, that wasn't an easy situation to be in. It wasn't something that I would consider or it wasn't a situation that I would kind of give to my worst enemy. Do you know what I mean? That's how bad it was back then. So I'm really thankful that things have gotten so much better of or some somewhat better over the last few months. And I'm just thankful that that is something that I can kind of look back upon and say, oh, I was able to come. I was able to kind of overcome it because at the time, 
it's dark man you know what i mean having to sit down and send out a million applications to places and not receive even sometimes an acknowledgement because one thing when you don't get the job right i think that's all well and good you go for it you try and challenge you interview you're down to the last two last four last six whatever and you don't get it cool the better man or woman won but when you send out an application right and they clearly say they want people and you don't even get an acknowledgement back it can be a bit of a brutal blow to the ego right it can make you kind of question your life question your decisions question where you're going it can make you question a lot of things and i think i did question my kind of will to live in that kind of scenario too because just like this is just not worth it you know what i mean it's probably causing me more mental damage than good but again the unfortunate kind of um fact of life is that you just have to keep going because sooner rather than later the storm will pass right that is just the truth of life like you can have bad luck after bad luck after bad luck but if you don't stop moving or if you stop moving then your bad luck will feel like it's eternal but if you keep moving your bad luck will eventually run out and you come into some good luck but you, it's just really difficult to keep going that's the thing you don't really get from kind of motivational coaches or you know yeah motivational speakers sorry all those kind of guys those rah rah guys they don't talk about that enough they just say you should get over it but they don't actually get down to the actual brass kind of details of it right in terms of no sometimes you want to keep going but life is just keeps hitting you in the face again and again that sometimes you might think to yourself maybe i am delusional maybe i don't maybe this isn't on the cards for me maybe i should focus on something else maybe this maybe that maybe this but sometimes you know unfairly enough whatever it may be sometimes just being persistent is just the name of the game being able to turn up every single day is the name of the game and i don't know how i did it i really don't i don't think i'm special in any kind of way in that regard but some way shape or form i was able to just you know dig deep and just be able to just turn up every day so i just kept applying every day i kept showing up searching for stuff reading this reading that going over my you know my application rereading my my opening letters i do whatever i could on my end to kind of make sure that i was doing all the right things or, or i was doing things the right way to give myself the best possible chance to get those positions and then i was hoping later down the line it would change and you know as luck would have it i kept applying and then towards the end i legitimately had what free no i had two solid offers of places so i had basically the opportunity to turn down one place and to go to another place whereas before in the beginning of the year i couldn't even get a reply so i spent eight months not getting any replies right eight months good not getting any headway and then towards the end of the year around what i feel like september-ish around that time suddenly i start getting interviews and suddenly i get two solid offers i have to choose from so that I could sit down and say, okay, let me decide what I want to do. What do I want to commit my future to? What's going to serve me best in terms of my career? What's going to allow me the opportunity to do the things I want to do here on the side? Like all these sort of things. And it's such a blessing. Like, honestly, I'm so thankful of it. And again, it was dark in the beginning of the year. Like I've been there. It was really, really bad. And I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But again, like I said, unfortunately with life, like the only way you can overcome those things is just to keep going, putting one foot in front of the other. If I would have just kept further solid for myself and not applying for stuff the next day and not getting up and trying and not getting up and trying to kind of go back to a drawing board, read over my emails, see if I made a mistake and spelling, whatever. I, just, I, I did whatever I could. I went over my CV again. I did this, I did that. I changed so many things. And again, I'm not sure sure they made any marginal difference, but I think it kind of helped me to kind of understand that, okay, I'm doing everything in my power i've just got hope that suddenly luck can change because sometimes you could just there's no science to why you don't get things in life or why you don't achieve your there is none there is no kind of real hard science to tell you why you are not as big as um i don't know why you're not as famous as some people why you don't have much there's nothing there's no real science to it especially if you're working hard sometimes in life the, the chips just don't fall in your favor but what you can do is just focus on what you are doing you can't focus on what they're doing and how they're there if you just focus on why they're there you just focus on what you're doing the truth of the matter is more often than not a situation or a path will show its way to you it's weird to say it kind of feels woo woo but sometimes that's all it takes but in life you know things are harder than that's all again motivational speakers i'll talk about things are harder than that you've got children you're studying um you're looking after a family member you don't have time to be entrepreneurial and think of dreams you just want to you need money now which is why some of these guys i talk about everyone can be a millionaire sort of thing is bullshit because not everyone wants to be a millionaire some people just want to have a bit of extra coin to be able to go to ib for a couple of times per year or to take their grant to the bingo or whatnot do you know what I mean people have really modest goals they're not really that super crazy they just want to have some level of comfort some 
some level of flexibility in their finances and you know just an ability to pay their way forward right without having to ask people for money or support and shit that's all they want but you know again these people are just you know these motivational speakers guys are not really speaking to you and i they're mostly speaking to people that actually want to be like them i guess in some regard but anyway that aside like i said i'm just thankful for just being here like legitimately i'm not even stressing too much i think on the way back when i was walking back home and digesting my meal and just looking out in out onto east london i was just thinking to myself wow man i'm just thankful that i have the ability to be able to put myself in a position where i can go and have a meal out somewhere have somebody cook this for me have somebody come and serve it on my table give me a drink ask me if i'm feeling okay i'm just again i don't care where it was it could be a, it could have been a fancy restaurant like the Hawksmoor. it could have been a dive bar somewhere in the middle of whatever i would have just been thankful that i had the ability to afford it that was the ability right to be able to do so is just so such a privilege and i just can't be thankful enough about it especially again considering how badly my year started so that's something i definitely want to just be thankful for outright and just say i'm just like over the moon that it actually happened and um i'm just yeah i'm just hoping and praying for more better days like that going forward for the rest of you guys if you're in bad situation um that it gets better um sooner rather than later but again like i said just keep going man keep one foot in front of the other don't give up and hopefully hopefully um things will change for you too hopefully things will change for you too okay welcome back um if you notice any technical difficulties there please forgive i for whatever reason you know my tech stuff went a bit south but i think i managed to fix stuff together so if you're watching you won't be noticing a difference but if you're listening you may notice a slight kind of you know uptick in my voice and how i'm going about things but hey oh here we are let's just keep powering through let's just keep powering through so um after obviously talking about some of my um being thankful for this of the last last of the last year and obviously for the, the hopes i have for the beginning of this year i thought why don't we just bring things right back down to some level of normality by talking about what's been going on with covid and especially here in the uk um with some words from boris johnson this is courtesy of the bbc news it says the following england must stick with plan b to protect nhs as the prime minister it says england will continue with his plan b covid measures amid growing pressures on the nhs said boris johnson the prime minister said it would be folly to think the pandemic was over and pressure on hospitals would be considerable over the coming weeks however he added the country was in a much better position than this time last year thanks to vaccinations which you know i think we could all kind of agree to some extent although he doesn't mention anything about lockdowns doesn't necessarily mention anything about restrictions right those have haven't really that those have really haven't made any measurable difference i think of course that whole line about they don't want to overwhelm the, the health services who knows what's right or wrong there but i think for for most of us i think there's no denying that vaccinations have definitely helped obviously the virus is mutated in some way especially with this omicron variant we have at the moment it seems to be more contagious but less lethal which is definitely helpful and i just think medical advances you know alternative stuff and whatever it may be have definitely added to the overall um effort or the overall kind of um lack of numbers or deadly numbers that we did see prior um i think all those things have definitely helped of course experience over time um those are all kind of contributed but I don't think someone can really say that lockdowns and whatever they may be have had a really big diff have had a really big effect or if anything no one i think most people can agree that lockdowns in terms of the positives in terms of the pros and cons we can definitely say there's more cons to lockdowns than there are pros especially when it comes to the collective mental health of a nation especially in this kind of individualistic um sort of li way of life that we live in western europe i just don't think we're made out for those kind of things we don't make we're not made out to look out for the greater good of every man we're sort of made out to look for the greater good for ourselves and people around us but we don't really care about everyone else outside of our little bubble so to ask people within those nations within those countries to suddenly put aside their own personal ambitions in order for us to protect the collective good they're not going to have any idea what you're talking about and it's going to affect them negatively because part of their identity is locked into being part of a particular group is locked into presenting themselves a particular way and when you strip that away from them you know it's going to be the the damage is kind of um, unfathomable i can't even imagine you know for the people that go out for you know after work drinks on a thursday night and then you can't do that anymore and your identity of like being the guy or girl that gets everyone around or being the guy or girl that is just oh what's happened there okay get, get rid of that or being a guy and girl that's just like you know you know the talk of the town the life of the office whatever it may be just imagine if that suddenly goes away you're not that person anymore how are you gonna feel it's not gonna feel nice is it so um 
I just don't know the kind of long lasting effects of those kind of things and what it actually does for us as a country. But, you know, whatever. Continue. The Prime Minister stressed Omicron looks less severe than other variants despite it being incredibly transmissible. Speaking during a visit to the vaccination centre in Aylesbury, he said the mixture of things we're doing at the moment were the correct measures. Definitely agree. He said it included um, continuing with the Plan B, which include mask wearing in certain outdoor se- indoor settings, guidances to work from home where possible, and ensuring it is taken seriously by people. And I have to be honest, this whole wearing masks in certain locations i don't think it's worked i've not seen a single person in the shop enforce that rule in any meaningful way none zero and then again i don't expect them to because i know if i was working retail i would hate to be given that job where i stand in front of the flipping doors and ask people to put their masks on it's already embarrassing enough to stand there like a flipping human placard to then go and ask somebody to put on a mask which is something you don't even care about because you've already got yours on it's just annoying or something you just don't want to do because it's not your position you don't want to do that because it's not something you feel like you're comfortable doing it's really you know annoying and I've uh, and I've kind of seen only a handful of people do it on public transport. It's honestly a trip. It's honestly a real mind fuck. Whenever you go abroad, especially when you go to places in Europe where you know maybe the numbers of COVID are far worse than they are here, or maybe they're a little bit more draconian in their measures, or they're a little bit more forthright in how they put things forward. It's always a f- trip when you come back to the UK because people just don't care here. We're running, we're running fast and loose. We might be the America. Yeah, no, the UK might be the Florida of the of europe if that makes sense we just don't care we really don't like covid does not exist here um it's just a it's just a concept right it's just an idea it's just a kind of uh it's a theory <laughs> it's not really a real thing because you go to stores like i said you go to stores public transport people don't necessarily wear masks no one really cares and you know for better or worse it's kind of worked out all right for us because certain sectors of our industries haven't shut down we've been able to live a somewhat normal life which has been great over the last couple of months but bloody hell he continued to said he said included the duh. he said um these measures were due to expire on the 20th of january although that they will be expected to be reviewed on wednesday probably going to extend it more bbc political correspondent chris mason said that he expects the status quo to rumble on until the end of the month when the picture should be clearer as to what the christmas and the ux mixing had on monday five one hundred and sorry on monday one hundred fifty seven thousand new coronavirus cases were reported across england and scotland if ever 42 deaths within 28 days of positive coronavirus as were reported in England, Mr. Johnson added that um, people should be sensible and take rapid tests before going to see people they do not usually meet, as well as getting their first, second, and booster jabs. We sh- we've got to make sure to look after the NHS in any way best we can. I appreciate the pressure the hospitals are under, but the annoying thing about protecting the NHS is that we don't have these COVID, um, you know, what you call it, lateral flow tests. They're not free, or well, the the free ones are not available, right? They're either sold out. Or there's some conspiracy that's rumbling on. I was seeing certain parts of social media where people are saying that they're doing that on purpose to push you to get lateral flow, to, to get PCR tests and whatnot, because those are the things that are actually going to make those guys money, blah, 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 because they pay for them. Who knows? Um, but you can't get the free ones anymore. And I think the free ones you can get in packs of like seven or something. So those are few and far between. So whatever people are doing now, they're either just put, bringing up you know old results and fobbing the numbers or they're getting tests from other people that might be contaminated. I don't know what they're doing, but there definitely is a shortage of those lateral flow tests, which is annoying because there was a point in time when they were handing those things out in certain stations, right? They're just giving them away for free. And now you can't get one for love, no money, um, especially over the whole holiday season, which didn't really make any sense to me because you'd imagine most people would be mixing the most around this sort of time. But hey, again, I don't know anything. I'm a complete bozo when it comes to this stuff. I'm just thankful that we have the possibility to live somewhat of a normal life here in the UK compared to some of my other brothers and sisters in Europe who are having a hell of a time over there. So again, um, the plan B seems to be working so far. I don't know how long it's going to continue working, but for now it seems to be doing okay. So no complaints from you in that regard. And then um, that also brings me on to this topic. I think I was listening to a little bit of the podcast this morning. I haven't finished the entire thing, but definitely recommend some of you go check it out. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Joe Rogan and the Joe Rogan experience. Um, over the years, or over the last few months, has been really difficult to maintain being a fan of his because it feels like COVID has really broken that guy's brain. He seems to be hell-bent on sharing um, without even us asking every sort of anecdotal evidence that he has regarding the vaccine and regarding 
who's got it and if they got the vaccine if they had strokes or felt like it was a stroke but it might have been a panic attack we don't know and for the longest time he said that he basically avoided getting COVID because he ran a lot and because he did kettlebell swings and punched a heavy bag that's why he thought he didn't get COVID which is fucking bizarre and insane to be saying but that's legitimately why he said he didn't get COVID and he gets it and of course, instead of getting the vaccination, which he's obviously scared about, he's now doing all these alternative medicines, all these alternative approaches, such as ivermectin and, um, you know, taking cold baths and all that and, you know, whatever else he's doing. He's doing many, many things. I think Tim Dillon referred to his doctor as a witch doctor, right, that comes around and provides all these alternative things that people can do. And again, if you're in the States and you can afford to do so, fair enough. But I think someone with his platform advising or giving the impression that vaccinations are the best option for most people. People, and that what he's doing is basically reserve people to have the ability to because that would be a different argument if he came out and said hey I have the means and the positive because I think from what I understood every guest that comes to the Joe Rogan show gets tested right they get a PCR test a proper one where you can be able to see if you are positive or not right and if you're positive then obviously you don't go on the show um, that's like a stipulation that they have there's no you know there's no um, um, and R and that, which is fairly fine and fairly responsible to do but to suggest that somehow non-vaccinations is the best way to go considering the amount of people can let's just look at it let's just be normal brained right about this vaccination anti-vax people do have a point but if you're trying to tell me that vaccines are more dangerous than any other alternative out there then you're obviously smoking crack because there's been way more people who've got the vaccination who are okay than the ones who aren't now there are some people who are not going to be okay because this vaccination was somewhat rushed right considering the toil it took on the world's population and the amount of deaths that happened all at once it's no surprise they had to rush through things push through things maybe skirt a few laws and jump over this jump over that red tape we know that happened they're not going to admit it but we all know that most likely this vaccination or this vaccine was rushed maybe not the current iteration because there's been different developments over the years i think we even saw with the johnson johnson one right that one shot one that got taken off market because of some really bad um side effects to it but by and large, most people that have got vaccinated have been fairly okay, right? No one's really, you know, by and large, overall, in terms of numbers. So if that's the case, then you, you if you're in Joe Rogan's position, you should just say, hey, I've got the money to allow me to explore other options. And because I'm a fairly fit guy and I take loads of steroids, you, you know, TRT, you know, testosterone replacement therapy and all these sort of things that he takes, then of course, those things are going to help his ability to stave it off, especially if the new details and finds that we're seeing now where basically saying that if you're overweight or unhealthy, that basically makes you more at risk of not only contracting COVID, but also dying from it, right? And, the, and you know, and obviously the consequence of it being fatal. We all know that to be true. No one wants to say it. No one wants to talk out loud about it. But we all know for a fact that most people that are passing away or, you know, let's say the majority of people that are passing away from COVID have definitely passed away because of their underlying health issues. There's obviously anomalies that exist there, but we know that to be true. Why don't you just come out and just say, hey, I've got the money to do so. I can do it. I'm going to try. Instead of making it seem as if this is an option for everybody, because it isn't. Same thing happened to Trump, innit? Like, I think people are saying that Trump was legitimately on his deathbed when he got COVID and he came out and basically said, oh yeah, you don't need it. It's just, I don't know. I just think it's all bizarre. But anyway, so that being said, Joe Rogan had a really good um, guest on at the moment. Sorry about that. Called um, Dr. Robert Malone, who's an who allegedly reports to be the inventor of mRNA vaccines and somebody who kind of has a lot of kind of um, controversial things to say about vaccination shit. Had him on a show, fairly eye-opening conversations. Again, I disagree with a lot of the stances he takes, but again, I enjoy the conversation. I think it's important to have dissent. dissent yeah dissident voices or dissenting voices or dissenting voices out there in public questioning things um obviously offering up their own evidence maybe going ahead and funding their own research whatever it may be i think that's important to have in this society um and then of course having the overarching thing be hey in general the best approach we think is everyone to get vaccinated that's what's working so far that's what's going to get us further or closer to um sorry closer to kind of going back to some sort of normality that's fine but then when you see headlines like this from daily mail you start to question whether or not this is all a big conspiracy in general right For, to just confuse the population overall because i just don't see how this helps so this is courtesy of the daily mail it says youtube and twitter delete joe rogan interview with scientists who helped invent mrna vaccines um dr robert malone claimed the u.s is now in nazi germany with society hypnotized to believe in vaccines and extreme pandemic measures 
So they deleted this guy's video, right? Again, it wasn't an official video, so it could have been a takedown from Joe Rogan and his um, company that they used to take down videos. So we're not going to go too hard on that. But for the most part, it's no denying that YouTube and other platforms, they don't like dissenting voices. They don't want an alternative view on what's going on out there for quote unquote misinformation, which I never really understood. I think nowadays with the information that's available, with the abundance of information that's available, the population of those global citizens overall, wherever you want to deem them, should be should be um, allowed to make informed, grown up, adult decisions on what they believe to be true and what they don't believe to be true. I don't think deleting videos or putting warning signs on videos before people watch certain things is going to convince them either way i need to still watch it myself i don't know about you but i don't take the word of just my friends on a place that's shit oh this place is shit it's not that great of course it's going to inform the way that i view it but i still want to go see for myself and if it is shit cool um it just confirms what my friend said and it also gives me a bit of a story to replay when i go meet them back back the next day in the pub somewhere do you know what i mean but i know there's some people who just want to take the word of what their friends say or what some authority says or what some publications said but i've always been under the guise of the best way to navigate around life is to just kind of gather your own experience or gather your own data points or learning points as you go through life and again not in all ways shapes or form not in all walks of life but i think in some aspects you should in terms of information when it comes to these medical mandates and stuff i don't necessarily think there's much risk in saying hey i'm just going to believe what the science tells me now because that's what we've all done the only place i'm not going to go any further is obviously the boosters i think that's nonsense i think they, they kind of laid out what the groundwork was in the beginning of what this virus was about now this virus is mutating and becoming a lot weaker than it was prior this idea that the booster is going to because uh, all they the, the the illusion that they're giving out to people is that somehow these vaccines are a one-stop kind of cure-all that's what they've done the marketing around it and the branding has been so bad similar to what happened to brexit the the what you call it the crowd that was obviously staying in europe or you know the the anti-brexit crowd their messaging was so bad um compared to obviously the brexit crew they kind of they had, they had snappy slogans they had clear talking points of course most of it which could be debunked but still they had a far more compelling story to tell of how beautiful the uk would be and how prosperous it would be once we left the europe once we left e the eu obviously that didn't happen and the you know people were sold an absolute melon in terms of um what they got in the end of it right they thought they were getting an iphone they got a box of bricks but still they gave a pretty compelling um argument as to why you should be voting for brexit and i just feel like these guys when it comes to pro vaccine people the pro lockdown people they don't really have a compelling argument they just tell you to just shut up listen to this listen to him listen to her and i don't think that works and then on the other side of things when an a dissenting voice comes out and does offer you know more data or information or talks in a logical clear rational way they then delete or take take down their video because they feel as if it's misinformation and again like i said I don't think this helps. I think, if anything, this just emboldens um, the people who are anti-vax, who are questioning, also who are kind of um, skeptical of, um, you know, science, who are skeptical of government, who are skeptical of big pharma. It emboldens them. It makes them think, look, this is all a big conspiracy. But like I said, I'm not too sure if this is just a conspiracy to get people to be vaccinated or whether or not it's just a conspiracy to get make people confused because this is just so unproductive it's not even funny why would you delete this guy's video it's just going to grab more people to go and find it anyway it's just going to make them more confused based on the information they already have available in their head plus what he's saying it's just unnecessary just let the content exist as it is whoever stumbles upon it stumbles upon it but suppressing this sort of stuff only is only going to be a negative on what they want to do right so it's, it's the definition of the barber shizan effect it's just crazy um, to sum it up here, said uh, Malone 61 claimed to invent the mRNA technology used to COVID-19 vaccines when he was just 28 years old. During a podcast, Malone drew parallels between the US and Nazi Germany with mass information psychosis, which I'm going to play later. It's a really good point. Malone even questioned the effectiveness of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines in a tweet posted the day before his account was suspended on December 30th. And again, is is what he's saying dumb maybe but should you be completely thrown off a platform because you question or dare to say a vaccination is dumb it's just insane i don't understand it like for someone like myself i'm vaccinated right i got double jabbed but again i, I decided i'm not going to get to go get the booster but if i said or if i published a video that said oh um this and this is not good or whatever it may be do i deserve to have my whole account chucked off and my whole account frozen and deleted and marked off for social media because i dare to question something that i already got anyway after the fact it's just a bizarre state we're in at the moment it says here um 
yet despite um, creating the technology Malone said that he still speaks out about the getting jabbed simply because it's the right thing to do um, he told Rogan that government imposed vaccination mandates are destroying the medical field for medical incentives and political covering of course that's more of an American thing when it comes to Big Pharma but still issues that affect us here the episode uh, it's not the episode um, was posted in full on an account not affiliated with Rogan and was later removed the audio only version of the episode is still on Spotify now despite Malone's claims on the podcast 62% of American population is vaccinated and another 70 three percent have at least one dose so people have gone some way to go get it but again like i said i just don't think it's helpful to have these um accounts and these videos and these interviews suppressed in any way meaningful way because it doesn't do anything it doesn't do what they think it's going to do in terms of making people know that that's not misinformation if anything it makes people more sure that you're lying to them and that you're not actually being honest as to what's going on out there and i think um a good point to sort of kind of carry on with this is this little clip courtesy of an account called um again it's weird that all these kind of descending voice accounts are all right wing in it there's not a so far i've not seen any sort of like liberal account that questions marks mandates that questions lockdowns or whatnot it's just all right wing people and it's just weird i don't understand why that is the case why are only people on the right or conservatives being the ones who want to question these things why don't everyone want to question it why isn't everyone thinking to themselves hey why are we going to another lockdown again? What good is this going to actually do for us as a nation? Are we actually going to bring the numbers down? Are people going to be better off because of it? Like really, really questioning it. Does it doesn't happen? People just kind of go along with it as as per usual and just hope for the better. It's just so sad to see. It really is. Okay, yeah, it's not having it's not having psychosis. I'll link the I'll link the clip in the description so you can check out yourself. This is just not going to work for me right now at the moment. Unfortunately, it's just fighting. It's fighting two for now to not give me the ability to play that clip. Maybe that is part of the massive information psychosis. Um, the you know the pro mass mass information um, psychosis people out there are kind of suppressing my ability or throttling my ability to kind of. Um, or putting the brakes, actually not throttling, putting the brakes on my ability to stream um, this video via this podcast that I'm obviously recording right now. So, you know, it is what it is, it is what it is. What can you do? Let's quickly move on to that one. Um, let's speak about this quickly here. Another thing that kind of, again, was kind of grinding my gears over the weekend. Again, just stuff that I don't understand, maybe way above my pay grade or my ability to kind of discern and to decipher but this is courtesy of joe it says twitter suspends all accounts linked with politicals for all owner and if you're not mis if you're not aware i don't know if you know if you know in the uk you won't necessarily probably be aware of this but there's this account on twitter that was really popular over the last what year or so called politics for all i think they had another one called football for all where essentially it was an impartial um news resource where they basically shared headlines clips information about things going on in the news some of which you know were kind of provided kind of behind the scenes insider stuff sources whatever it may be but it was just impartial no spin no whatever just straight impartial kind of quotes and headlines and a lot of people shared it um, a lot of people were following it and for, for me personally it was a great way to kind of get a snapshot of what was going on in the news without kind of diving deep on you know without having to dive head first into op-eds and whatnot right you could just kind of read the headline get the gist of what's going on and then kind of read the article itself and go from there but sometimes when you see actual stuff written in certain places certain publications it can sometimes just put you off from even reading in the first place because of where it's been publicized or who's writing it or how they're writing it but sometimes just seeing it on a politics for all kind of feed even if it was coming from those same places it kind of allowed you to kind of strip away any sort of emotion and just deal with what you're kind of seeing and then decide what you want to do later so i didn't really see any problem with it but again some people online i guess might have seen the issue with it they might have probably not liked a certain tweet or maybe i think in the last few months i did see there was a lot more personality being shown in the uh, posts and tweets coming out um when it came to politics for all it wasn't as kind of black and white and vanilla it was beforehand just providing info it did kind of have a bit of snark a bit of spin so maybe that's why it got some people's tails up because they felt like oh no if they're talking like this they must mean they're on the dark side which is the right side right people necessarily on social media don't necessarily have any time for conservatives it feels like so as soon as people kind of find out that the account owner was a um what you call it was a conservative it was always going to be a rap but it's just annoying that that one thing is what led to twitter deciding to kind of take down the account i'm sure the the guy behind it also has a probably a bit of a checkered past but i don't know if i care if you're willing to provide news in an impartial unbiased way 
and it's just done because you want to provide an alternative to the dross that we get out there but you have your own checkered history with whatever you've done i really could care less what it is um i just don't think that's fair i really don't especially considering how crappy the news is at the moment right considering how manipulative it is at the moment how gaslighting is at the moment to have a real impartial again somewhat impartial not going to be totally impartial because people's own politics is always going to seep in there but to suspend all of the accounts basically because of the sins of the owner is just grossly unfair and i just think kind of speaks to the entire malaise and dysfunction going on now on social media at the moment right you got instagram not looking anything like instagram i think i've only started using it recently the last six months but instagram now you go in the main feed and it's not in chronological order cool let's say they, they think that's a better way to go about things right i don't necessarily agree i want to have the option to see my feed um populated algorithmically and also the ability for me to follow my actual friends chronologically. I want to see what they're actually getting up to in real time. Not see a post for them six months ago. Do you know what I mean? I want to see in real time. But they don't do either of those things. So the, now the algorithm, the algorithm sort of induced feed now has, you, now has them pushing posts from people you don't follow. Accounts you have no idea even existed. Promoted posts of people's fit pics that you don't care about. That's what they do now. So not only is it not giving you control to see what you want to see, they're also telling you what you want to see and showing you people you don't even know. So again, Instagram is a complete shell of its own kind of shell of its former self. It's basically another data mining resource for Facebook, right? They're just gonna get insights and um, you know, behavioral kind of yeah, behavioral insights on what you do on your computer or what you do on your smartphone, but it's not necessarily a platform to share beautiful pictures or to engage in beautiful content. It's basically another YouTube. Cool. That exists on there. Twitter is a it's a complete dumpster fire. Facebook I never go on anymore. So you the the platforms themselves are quite toxic and quite bad, but there's some good accounts that pop up from time to time that try and be of service to humanity and then they get taken out as well it's just like god almighty man when will this end so now to have an account on twitter you have to have a perfectly squeaky clean past you can't have any sort of contract it's linked to because if you happen to have an account that blows up overnight and someone doesn't like to cut your jib you can get your whole business taken away from you it's just like anyway it says yeah, all accounts linked to the brand um that has been suspended on twitter twitter suspended all accounts relating to online brand politics for all including news for all football for all and the brand's owner nick moore the brand which has been rapidly the rapid popularity and uh, sorry increasing popularity over the past year has seen something has been something of a talking point on social media both for its business model and the man behind the empire um as noted by evolve politics the website created by more for the company has also gone down it currently remains unclear what twitter's reasoning behind the suspension is and so it's always coordinated these things never happen in a silo same thing happened with alex jones you get banned from one platform and they all kind of fall like dominoes and if you know if, if ever there was a monopoly that would be an example of it um it currently remains unclear. Politics for All, labelled as a strictly impartial platform, came under scrutiny last year after it was revealed that Nick Moore, the creator of the page, is a Conservative Party supporter and a Brexit advocate. Like, I don't know, man. If this means we have to get a impartial news source somewhat from a guy that has those things on him, I don't care. I really don't. Maybe I'm in a minority here. And again, this is someone that's not very overly political. I could care less, but I just don't understand this, man. It really is a concerning kind of um, time in history that we're living now where dissenting voices alternative voices voices that don't necessarily you know agree with the mainstream perspective on things are the ones that are basically at risk of getting because that's the thing you can rise in popularity if you've got an alternative viewpoint but it feels like you're always going to be at the behest and at the will and at the end of the leash of these platforms because if they decide that you don't fit what they're trying to represent in that moment uh, in that era suddenly your whole business goes down and you know all those people that they basically employ sponsorships all this stuff completely goes away just because they decided on the whim no you know what you don't fit what we're doing here as a brand pop it's just uh, as a brand as a platform you're just like god almighty you guys man it doesn't necessarily do the thing that you think it does honestly it just makes those conspiracy nutcases more of nut more nutcase -y, right like if you're an anti-vax person are you ever going to take seriously what somebody like a dr fauci says to you when you think that he might have lied and he hasn't addressed the lie and he hasn't admitted to lie you just think he, he he's lied said something changed his mind of course a couple of times but made it seem like i didn't like i don't know man these people are weird next on the list here 
we have courtesy of the Daily Beast. It says Joe Rogan joins Jason Miller's MAGA love free speech site just in case. Um, Joe Rogan has joined former Trump aide Justin Miller's right wing MAGA love and social media platform Getter. I don't know how you pronounce it. Is it called Getter or Getter? I actually got an account on there, but again, it just looks like right wing nut jobs, which is always the case with these sort of platforms. But I just got one just to kind of hold my username, which is again unfortunate that all these platforms that are served again, this is this is why I don't get right. There's so many kind of people that I would you'd say are left leaning on social media, especially places like Twitter, especially those blue checkmark people who get a lot of abuse, who are always involved in some sort of Twitter spat or Twitter war. You would think collectively among them, they would try to kind of maybe siphon off or siphon away, um, pull away, right, drift away from Twitter and kind of set up their own platform, set up their own site that maybe speaks to their political leanings or the way that they view life, the way they view society, sexuality, whatever it may be. You think that'd be a great way to do stuff, right? To kind of be like, okay, cool. Twitter's toxic, Twitter's horrible, Twitter's hateful, too many right wing nut jobs. Let's go and do our own thing over there. They don't do it. They just wait around for Twitter to kind of change to their whims, which they eventually end up doing. And then everyone else kind of suffers the consequence of it just because you don't agree with them politically, which again, I just don't think it's healthy. I think places like Twitter and places, most social media places, I think in general will be a far more enjoyable process, enjoyable platform where people are able to just co coexist without the threat of cancellation or ev account deletion. You know what I mean? People will be able to coexist together really well, I think, if that ex existed, but it doesn't. Instead, we've got this nonsense at the moment where, you know, these right-wing people will try to set up their own platform. It doesn't work out well because, you know, all the payment providers and all the server people all these people that they need to make a business function are mostly in bed with the people on the left so if they decide that you're not good for business they'll cut you in an instant and then your whole site's gone so you're building it for nothing right you're building it just to get a bit of hype a bit of you know press coverage but in the long term you can't exactly build a life around it because at any moment they could pull the plug on you but again like i said it's just horrible for a guy like me who doesn't necessarily identify with any political party at all to go there and just see the same old people screaming into the void. This is like, I'm not going to sit on this fucking bullshit site. Do you know what I mean? T Twitter's toxic enough as it is. I just pop in and pop out. I need to use it, but I'm not going to sign up to another alternative that's just as toxic having the same old people in their little echo chambers talking about the same thing they're talking about forever on Twitter. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, it continues. It says here, um, the podcaster and the comedian post on his Sunday afternoon rejoice. The move um, from, da -da -da, from Rogan follows the suspension of Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene who definitely is the most important person to come out of CrossFit in the last 10 years right and forget all your champions and shit Marjorie Taylor Greene is definitely CrossFit's biggest ambassador and definitely somebody who embodies everything that they're about so that's something good to see Rogan might himself gain um going some way he said he's broadcast conspiracy theories and COVID-19 misinformation and anti transatlantic according to the liberal watchdog media matters as for Getter it has had its own debacle over the past few months after launching in July 2021 the platform recently blocked users from posting racist term Goripa the Getter permanently banned white nationalist Nicholas Fuentes only to subsequently be spanned by its followers the user in question violated guitars clearly defined terms of use and has been suspended from the platform and gives a spokesman told the daily so obviously they're trying to do something in terms of suspensions and protections and whatnot but it's essentially just like a right-wing twitter it's not anything crazy the design's quite awful to be fair um I, I just again i just signed up just to protect my username just in case it does end up blowing up but it probably won't because these competitors just don't know what they're doing and you know all of this all the supporting infrastructures they need to run a business is of course in bed with most of these big social media platforms in bed with a lot of these um um, people who complain online so it's only going to be a short run i guess but you know whatever gets them out of bed i guess is probably important and kind of gets them that vim for life that they need to keep on battling through you can you know whatever we can do but like i said i just wish the conversation around this stuff was interesting man because it clearly isn't it's just all nonsense it really is it's just all this stuff has broken everyone's brain we're all brain broken really that's what i've come i'm seeing that's what i'm kind of recognizing we're all somewhat brain broken we need a healing time we need to be able to kind of go back to some level of a drawing board and kind of have maybe the ability to kind of i don't know rectify the situation is that rectify whatever it may be called we need to do something i don't know what it is but something needs to be done because right now it feels like this stuff isn't working it just isn't like whatever this stuff we're doing at the moment just is not working um and now we're in a position where everyone don't doesn't trust everyone we're all kind of looking at each other from the corner of our eye 
um you know we don't want anyone to get the better of us we just i don't know we're just living in a weird place man i really do think we're living in a weird 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 place the weirdest of places the weirdest of times um it doesn't seem like it's gonna get better before. it doesn't seem like it's gonna get better before. it's gonna get worse before it gets better that's all i want to say um which is you know understandable considering where we are in life but I don't know man I just want I just want things to get back to some level of normality sooner rather than later if that's okay with you that's all I want really like you know what I mean I can't honestly I can't lie I, I just want a bit of that but unfortunately the powers that be want to kind of consistently or continually put their foot on our necks and we seem to love the rough play um and yeah I guess it just is what it is and it? it really is I think someone mentioned once I was talking to somebody the other day actually they were like oh this is actually yeah i think someone mentioned something which was quite macabre but also pretty honest something like about oh they feel somewhat somewhat glad somewhat happy to see some people who are from western europe who may be indigenous europeans who basically being put in a position where they're suddenly now struggling for the first time in their lives like legitimately struggling um and he actually enjoys that because it kind of um brings him some level of satisfaction at these people that he kind of grew up with who he felt like had the best lives and were always complaining he never understood why because yes wherever country he came from he escaped the big war he had to struggle here to learn the language to get a first job all these really big big hurdles that you know you'd think uh, especially through these modern eyes that we have now especially myself as the son of immigrants and whatever um you look at it and you think to yourself wow man these people complain or you know, the people that are indigenous to this country complain about how hard life is and they don't really know what hard is. They don't really know how difficult it can get. And now we're all in this together. We're in this like, really crappy situation that none of us want. None of us want it to continue. None of us ask for. And all of us are trying our best in our own way to kind of make the best out of it. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. And again, it's not our fault. We've literally, you know, to use a DSP dark side field um, phrase, we've done nothing wrong we did everything correct right some of us not all of us some of us have we've tried our best we've stayed away from people we've worn our mask when we had to wear our mask all these things that you're meant to do as a human to allow the rest of humanity to somewhat be okay we've done it for the most part and it still hasn't worked right they're still inventing all these other new things to get people to do this to do that but so far considering all the information we had considering the you know those massive amounts of deaths in italy that happened really quickly um in parts of spain and whatever else remember when it was spreading across europe even with all that information in place and all these other anecdotal stories still still people are doubtful and i just i don't know man i just don't know i really don't it's just it's just a sad situation to be in overall and you're just hoping hopefully over the next few years things get somewhat better man that's all you can really kind of hope for you really can for whatever reason this thing keeps saying um uh, in load encoder in flipping thingy let me see if i can maybe put it to super fast and that might work maybe it might work let's see bear with me one second and see if this works please work because at the moment it looks like this is going to be either really choppy or it's going to sound really good i don't know one or the other but i'm hoping it just sounds good because if it's choppy and it doesn't sound good then you know i'm in trouble you know what i mean but as long as it's choppy and it sounds okay i'll be fine i don't really mind um but i just want to but i just what i'd like to have two i'd like to have both things maybe i just have to just fix up and figure out how to fix this fucking other macbook pro i got here in the back of me oh sorry i've got near the back um it's the old one i think it's 2013 or something it's the one with a cd rom or cd drive in it so i just need to change it's like a solid state drive need to update the ram update the battery and buy a new charger so essentially start from scratch again it should be okay fingers crossed but you know these things never really sometimes go as you intend them to go but hey hope we can only dream now it is courtesy of the metro yeah this is kind of some sad news for those of you who did use blackberries back in the day i'm sure most of my audience did um it says yeah blackberry phones will stop working for good this week it says before everyone carried an iphone or samsung galaxy phone many gadget fans opted for blackberry the internet enabled um into the inter internet enabled 
keyboard toting smartphones are the hottest business accessory um, and were favored by the likes of Barack Obama and Kim Kardashian. But sadly, BlackBerry's fortune diminishes the iPhone game popularity and the Canadian company switched to making security focused software. For a time, the BlackBerry name was licensed to a Chinese manufacturer named C TCL, but it came back, but it came, but that came to end in 2020. Um, now it appears the former BlackBerry devices will cease to function properly as companies stopping all software updates for them, which again is a sad state of affairs because I think I mentioned recently on social media or something how I missed four QWERTY keypads or keyboards on phones especially with my fucking massive hands and fat fingers I need to have a phone where I can clearly delineate, clearly delineate between where the keys are um, and without even blinking without even looking I think I remember doing that a lot on the BlackBerry you'd kind of answer your friend's DMs not even looking just typing out really really quickly and passing them through um, unfortunately now it looks like those days are long gone because you know, now BlackBerry are basically making iPhone copy phones, uh, light phones, and not just doubling down and focusing on what they do best, which is always being a shame and a missed opportunity, I feel, in my eyes, for them to actually compete. Again, they were probably never going to win, but to just to compete at least a little bit and offer an alternative would have been great to see. So it says it continues. Services for the phone will be brought to an end on tomorrow, January fourth. After which, BlackBerry says the devices will no longer be will no longer go reliably function. This includes being able to put on phone calls, send text, receive data, or contact um, to emergency numbers. Now, this also gives an indication what these mobile phone companies do once you need an upgrade, right? During around the upgrade time, or before that, even when they can maybe free more money out of you, they always kind of invent or you know send through these artificial. No, or kind of you know withhold certain updates that will then cause you to lose functionality on certain things of your phone which would then have you wanting to run your head through a brick wall but then realizing oh i need to actually buy a new one do you know it's kind of a clever tactic that they do it continues here said last year blackberry said it would be starting to take his legacy software offline including support for his own operating system like the blackberry 10 software at the end of 2020 he said the termination of these services and offerings and infrastructure will also impact functionality of the applications such as the enhanced sim based licensing um ideating so identity based licensing blackberry hosted email addresses and blackberry link blackberry desktop manager and blackberry 10 devices remotely um, there is no impact to the new BlackBerry project, which is AR based, endorsed on security um, solutions. So, yeah, there they are. Let me feel this. Continue to say this whole social media conversation. Anyway, cool. Um, miss the BlackBerry. I really do. I miss having a full QWERTY keyboard like this. I miss having the ability to. Search. And the only thing that was annoying about BlackBerry was this little roll bar kind of mouse thing. It would always get stuck or it would always get hair caught on it. So, you'd have to either remember there was a technique where you could take the whole ball off and clean it and blow around it and whatnot which i'm sure probably did more damage than good but still as an option but again the qwerty keyboard the ease of use of using stuff like blackberry dm was it called is that something that's called that right that was so fun it really really was fun it was ridiculously fun um and again probably the best time in mobile smartphone design history i think and if they would just would have again it's hard to say because i'm sure the money was not the greatest but if they would have maybe just focused in on doing what they did best which is of course designing and putting out these full quality keyboard type phones i think they would have done far better than what they did when they tried to kind of just copy what iphone were doing with their own kind of blackberry iphone-esque kind of smartphone-ish type phones but you know again what do i know um, let's move on there. Let's talk about this quickly. Um, move on there. It's not always talk about that. Yes, yeah, always. Oh God, spare me a second. Sorry about that. I'm yawning. It's late here. I don't want to feel like um wings of redemption actually always yawning about stuff like this. But part of me, it is extremely late as I'm recording this again. Like I said, I've had many computer technical difficulties and glitches that have kind of put me in this situation where I've had to start this over a few times. But hey. Let's just continue. Bear with me one second. Oh, now this fucking thing is giving me the flipping rainbow um, cursor of death. Honestly, this computer will be either the end of me or the end of the show. Something along those kind of lines. I'm hoping not the end of the show, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Come on, brother. Leave me alone. What is wrong with this thing? Okay, I'm going to maybe try and force quit this. Is it going to work? It's not. Okay, let's see if I can force quit this. Bear with me one second. Force quit. Because now it's giving me this rainbow death. And obviously it's a birthday. 
Creative Cloud, of course, as per usual, it's always giving me issues. Let's see if this can work. Oh no, it can't even take that off. It's not even letting me take off a bird. Oh my god, this is annoying, isn't it? The most annoying thing that's ever happened. Oh god. Alright, cool. Let's just um pause it there one second and hopefully it will come back. Oh god almighty, this has been an absolute roller coaster of a ride. Absolute roller coaster. Hopefully we're back now, back to normal. But yeah, let's just quickly go on this and just continue because this is really doing my nothing. Um quickly went to talk about this about, you know, weird situation. I think I mentioned before how weird um it is in the States with the cops and the police officers over there. It seems like the guys and girls over in the States when it comes to putting on that badge and putting on that uniform, they just seem to turn into absolute monsters. Or maybe the job is just so difficult that normal everyday people are uh, just have no other option but to be a monster in that role because you know you're basically having to encounter and come across the worst of the worst every single day who knows but this is an interesting story and kind of reflection on what's happened prior and also kind of maybe um solidifies some people's idea that they have regarding um there being this kind of obviously blue wall of silence and with them actually police officers in general maybe throwing under the bus people who kind of come from minority communities maybe women maybe people with alternative or unconventional um sex lives or whatever it may be called right there's something going on there when it comes to states when it comes to police officers where for some reason if you're a woman or if you're someone from a minority group um you seem to kind of get judged way more harshly than somebody who isn't and this is a clear example of it this is courtesy of the bbc it happened a few days ago so as it says uh, duante right death u.s taser mix up ex-officer guilty of manslaughter right so if you remember this happened a few um weeks ago a few months ago maybe i think um where this lady police officer pulled over a dude um i guess for a traffic violation and instead of taking out a taser to um you know restrain him in some way shape or form she got mixed up however she did it's impossible to do so some more people say because i think allegedly your taser and your gun are not even on the same side of your waist belt or whatever and i think one's yellow and one's not but she whatever she got mistaken and she pulled out her gun incorrectly in that panic and you know again who would you know there is an argument to be said if you're an officer and you're panicking um from a traffic violation then maybe you shouldn't be pissed off in the first place right but she panicked she mixed up as to her uh, weapons and she accidentally pulled out a real gun and shot the assailant two times i think and of course he died um, right there on the spot unfortunate set of circumstances um force and feelings got to his family but then she ends up getting found guilty of manslaughter right um rightfully so because of her mix-up right she fucked up she gets found guilty of manslaughter you go to the courts you get found guilty um you get stripped of your rank whatever it may be called jobs done mistakes happen it's, it's, it's brutal mistakes happen but at least punishment you know deserved punishment is being levied towards the person but then made me think of this other story that happened in 2017 that was far more egregious i feel like and for whatever reason the police officer didn't get found guilty and it's still an officer now, if I'm not mistaken. This is a case of the story of a victim called Daniel Shaver, police officer not guilty of murder. And if you remember this issue, this was this horrifying video where he gets called in um, to a report of a guy with a gun or something. Um, I think it's a hotel and apartment building. The guy comes out again. The video is horrifying. He's screaming, right? Pleading with the pistol not to shoot him. Obviously panicking. Obviously having some sort of panic attack or just being stressed out by a situation. Who knows what's going on there, right? Mental health issues. I don't know. But he clearly is somebody that's on the verge of being unhinged. And the piece of so of course, wants to, um, wants to kind of um, reduce the threat and wants to make sure that he protects himself and maybe his fellow officers are with him there at the time too but it seems like they go straight into hero mode instead of just kind of getting him to calm down and calm the whole situation down because they have the fucking semi-automatic weapons you think they'd be in a position to do so they don't they panic he panics and then i guess as he goes to kind of pull up his trousers i think they say and um, because obviously he's, he, he's his trousers are loose or whatnot wherever it may be he's kind of trying to pull them up they think he's going to reach for a gun and they fire straight at him um five shots i think sent of mass from an automatic semi-automatic weapon you're gonna die straight away and for whatever reason the officer that obviously ended up killing him this guy who looks like a fucking action man right who clearly looks like he wanted to maybe go in and do some sort of madness he gets found completely not guilty of all charges right absolutely heinous and again no weapons are found a completely diabolical case right nothing can really be spoken about again unfoundable lost you know two daughters growing up with her father off the back of one kind of um messed up encounter and then you look at this lady who again like i said say what you want to say about the lady 
but I think if I'm not mistaken, she she pleaded not guilty. She pleaded guilty. Um, she offered really no pushback from what I remember to in terms of her case and kind of accepted responsibility, got stripped and basically, you know, demoted and fired, whatnot, whatever it may be, got found guilty of manslaughter and now he's basically facing many, many years in prison. And you can only imagine how difficult that's going to be of an experience behind bars being a pleaded police officer. And it feels like she's kind of bore the brunt of everyone else's bad deeds or missteps from back in the day um i even think of that other guy who's a protester during the george Floyd protest one guy one older dude was i don't know protesting or handing some officer a bottle of water i forgot what he, what he was doing but he basically was no threat frail dude pretty tall but frail he looks like 70 odd years old i'd say maybe around that range and for whatever reason the police officer decides to either push him or give him that kind of this is sparta kick to the chest the guy stumbles back because he's old and has no balance and completely doesn't have any restraint or have any kind of way to brace himself and his head completely bounces off the concrete he lays there basically still looks like he's unconscious or whatnot and we hear that he's in hospital for a couple of days his brain was bleeding like i think he made a full recovery he didn't give any interview if i'm not mistaken but he clearly was hurt in a meaningful way, right? Like something that ridiculously is going to give you a bit of a headache the next day. The guy, officer, I don't think, I'm not even sure if they even investigated it, but no charges were brought against the officer, kind of got away with it scot free. And he just like, I just don't understand. I really, really don't. The lack of consequences for their actions just doesn't add up. And I think this is what leads to the distrust that people have with police in general, which again, I said to you before, the lack of consequences when it comes to misinformation, COVID on the other side of things, the same thing where I think that feeds into people being anti-vax because they don't seem to think that there's a common theme that's sort of tying some of these kind of takedowns and these deletions of accounts together. It all just seems a bit random. No one's really getting punished on the other side of things, right? If someone tells you, like, I don't know, the early advice was that don't wear a mask, right? Because it's going to reduce the ability of the people working within the medical department to be able to get hold of them themselves. And then they also then try to lie to get us to agree to do not, not wear, wear, wear a mask, even though it didn't make any logical sense, by then telling us they're not that effective. But then six months later, when the virus is obviously spreading super fast and it's being, you know, maybe because of people's lack of care and because they're not necessarily taking the precautions needed to kind of, you know, stem the 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 sort of the spread of it, you then tell people wearing a mask is the most important thing. So, of course, that bit of misinformation is going to make people sceptical as to who they should believe and what they should believe. And I just feel like when it comes to police officers in the States, it would, they'd be much better served if they just, if, again, it's really impossible to do so. But if there was a, if there was a situation, if there was like a process they could do that was somewhat unbiased, that could hold everyone accountable. Even if the even if the kind of findings don't necessarily serve the public good or don't necessarily agree with the public consciousness, like that dude, like that black guy that was um that got shot in a car during the George Floyd riots and then got paralyzed, right? The truth of the matter is that dude, if I'm not mistaken, he was told many times to not go back into the car. He didn't listen. He didn't listen. He did go back in the car, and if I'm not mistaken, he reached for a knife or reached for something in the glove box, and you know he only has himself to blame for getting shot. Again, un unfortunate circumstances, but the findings of that case were quite clear right the police officers did everything in their power to make sure the guy didn't go back into the car obviously they weren't you know trained well enough to restrain him one dude which is questionable but it is what it is they couldn't restrain him he didn't listen to the instructions continued to keep doing what they didn't tell him to do and of course he had to pay the ultimate price by nearly losing his life but now being losing his ability to walk unfortunate again but what can we do but that's when it, that's what happens when you have like in a proper external investigation where you treat everyone the same regardless of their rank regardless of what badge they're wearing because the citizen or not whatever regardless that way that's the only way you can kind of regain or build back trust with the public again who knows if they want to build back trust they might not want to build back trust they might be like hey this is how we run things you're the populace you're the you know citizens whatever you're the everyday folk you have to listen to what we say and go from there but i just don't understand it i really don't i think it's ridiculously unfair that one person has to kind of be the um the whipping girl the whipping boy whipping woman whatever for everybody else I even though what she did was heinous and she obviously deserves to spend many years in prison it just feels like when i think of somebody that's i don't know when i think of a bad person 
somebody that might have some kind of ulterior motives for being a police officer. I definitely think this guy, and if you watch the entire video again, not just he looks, just to watch the video, um, it just feels like someone like this probably shouldn't have any business being a police officer and probably should be serving as much, if not more, jail time than somebody like this who was clearly just not right to be a piece of anyway in a simple it's the same situation basically right if you're mentally unwell enough or don't have the ability to kind of calm your nerves so you don't mistake in your taser for a, you don't mistake in your gun for a taser you shouldn't be a cop in the first place but if that's the case and you both made mistakes then you should both be found guilty because again in this case no weapons were found right none no weapons were found says yeah for the 2017 case right um regarding the victim daniel shaver says initial police report said the movement was very similar to the motion someone drawing a pistol um but he also said that mr shaver's shorts had fallen around his legs leaving his underwear exposed his movement was also consistent with attempting to pull his shorts up as they were falling off no other proposal for his movement appeared to be viable so he clearly was trying to pull up his pants pull up his shorts and for whatever reason um, they mistaken that as a movement for him to pull out a pistol, pull out a weapon, pull out some sort of firearm, and they shot into him five times. And of course, the guy passed away. And it's just, it's just shocking. It really, really is. Really shocking state of affairs. That's why every single day, I think my lucky stars are in the UK. As much as we have our own issues, and I think when it comes to racism and stuff, the US definitely has a bigger issue than what we have. But I think overall, you know, the one issue that we have here when it comes to racism is that our racism is somewhat subverted. We kind, we kind of hide it right with different you know um things but it feels like in the u.s it's a lot more open and out there in some way shape or form not always but that's obviously the great thing in that regard so you know who your enemies are you know who to kind of avoid you know where you're going to meet some level of resistance whereas here everyone tries to pretend we're all kind of kumbaya when we're clearly not but then the other thing i'm also thankful for here in compared to the United states one thing i'm thankful for is the fact that our, web, our police officers here don't have weapons because our police officers aren't as aren't smarter than the united states cops they're probably maybe same level of dumb if not dumber so the fact that these guys don't have weapons like firearms is i thank it every day i really really do because i can only imagine the amount of deadly shootings that would happen in the uk you know based on some of these weird interactions you see people having with the police officers over here and how they react to it so again man blessings go out to everybody that's affected with those kind of things but it just is a really unfortunate state of affairs all around and i can't deny that it really 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 is um uh, the, 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 i think that might be where i end it it's a bit of a mad one because my computer kept breaking down and up and down and up but hopefully i can fix it very very soon but this is the action zing show episode number five three four thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company if it's the first time checking out a show via youtube make sure you smash like it subscribe and comment down below if you listen via the podcast app please leave me a five four three two one star review if you listen via the spotify app too please leave me a review on there also i'd greatly appreciate that and i'll see you guys again on the other side and until then take care be safe and peace